Hi there, uh, it's time to have a quick look at uh, post-pandemic economic prospects. And please try to remember that in economics we turn Newton's law on its head. What goes down must go up again. So let's have a quick look. We'll have a quick look at some bad news, uh, some news that we probably know already. And then let's move over to the recovery and the pace of recovery. Uh, if we look at uh, what happened to our long-term bond yield, now just remember if the bond yield increases as it did uh, after the pandemic broke out and the lockdown started, it means that investors are not interested in buying our government debt. Uh, I predicted that the time it would drop within two months by 300 basis points, which it did. I don't always get it right, but when I do, I try to tell people. Uh, cynics were talking about 14-15% bond yield, so in a nutshell, this is uh, really actually uh, good news. As far as the exchange rate is concerned, I think we know what happened, and you can clearly see on the slide that politics uh, comes into play. The Nene dismissal was bad for us. Ramaphosa's victory was good for us. COVID was bad for everybody, quite frankly. And then there was this, this crazy volatility, and at the time uh, when everybody was shouting, not everybody, but all these cynics, and there's quite a lot of them, we're shouting 2021, 20, 25 rand to the dollar. I said, give it three months and it'll be closer to 16 than 20. And I got that one right as well. So we must just calm down. Things are starting to recover. The real effective exchange rate of the rand within the next couple of months will be moving back towards the red line, which is where it should be. In order to preempt uh, questions and queries, yes, I know our debt is increasing. And if you look at this slide, uh, it was just below 60% of public debt GDP ratio. You can add uh, 20 percentage points to that. Important point to remember now is that you can add between 10 and 20 percentage points to everybody's public debt GDP ratio, including the US, including France. So we're all in this together. The secret here is to understand that interest rates are at a record low everywhere. And that will be my, one of my closing points, because people will be able to afford credit e uh, easier, and that's going to be good for the economy and especially for retail. So our public debt servicing costs also uh, con doesn't compare too badly with our peers. I've been told by one of my friends that, uh, you know, following all the chaos surrounding the regulations, that there seems to be a lot of PhDs in Parliament, uh, but that stands for past high school with difficulty. Um, you can clearly see that some sectors on this slide, Visa UK Consumer Spending X Index, some sectors did very bad. I mean, they, 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 the bottom fell out. Well, whilst others, food beef, just kept on growing, and that's not going to change. Uh, so also in future, uh, there are huge opportunities in trying to convince consumers that it's safe to go shopping, it's safe to buy this particular product. But obviously, Spa knows uh, how to handle that. It is the only major retailer uh, for which um, the majority of brokers out there are recommending that you buy those shares. And for me, uh, very well done. A quick look at agriculture. Our agriculture sector, which is a, a main ingredient that and food processing into your, your stores. Uh, the productivity of agriculture is astounding. You can see that from this slide. If you just look at maize, the area planted went down, but the yield per hectare just continues increasing. Um, within agriculture, there are obviously some products that are doing better than others. If you gave me a piece of uh, land tomorrow and you guaranteed the private property rights, uh, we must be very careful for expropriation without comprehension. That's what I call it. Uh, and I like to believe we'll, we won't have that. Uh, but you can clearly see I would prefer avos to bananas. Orange exports are just going through the roof. I think we're going to have a record season overall for production as well. Um, and then, a fantastic slide. If you look at the top 10 export categories, first quarter 2020. Agricultural and food, number two, uh, individually. And as a result of our farmers having decided to well with all the uncertainty, to well with all the threats about land reform and the, the useless infrastructure, we'll fix the roads ourselves if we have to. Just look at their export performance. This is magnificent stuff. And this country is feeding Africa. And I don't think I need to tell you that. Food security in South Africa is food security in the whole of SADC. And our government needs to get this message very clearly. You mess with this country's agriculture and there are, will be millions of people on this continent that will be hungry on top of those that are as a result of Mugabe's disastrous policies. He has been nominated uh, posthumously for the Nobel Prize uh, for chemistry. Uh, because he changed that country's currency into another substance, and that's quite a remarkable achievement. SADC countries, uh, they are very populous, uh, as you can see. Um, 
within SADC, we have a larger population, 340 million people, than the United States, with a much smaller per capita GDP and incomes, but growing at a faster rate. So that tells you that there are opportunities in this region. Okay, let's go into good news, big time. If you look at what the RAND did against the dollar, no economist would have predicted that the South African RAND will strengthen against the US dollar by 10% within a month. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I never thought I would be pleased to see the oil price recover. But in fact, I am. Because that means that the world economy is starting to grow. And if there's one theme that goes through these slides, these last slides, several of them, is spot the letter V. You can clearly see the V on this slide. You can see the letter V, um, uh, the reciprocal, uh, reciprocal of that, obviously in the bond yield slide, because if I were to uh, 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 add that reciprocal, you'll see the V all over the, over the show. And my essential theme is we are heading for a V-shaped recovery. And people must be just a little bit patient. If I were to include January, February, March, PMIs, the purchasing manager indices, on this slide, you'll see a V for every single one of these countries, and if I include South Africa as well. France has just joined China in taking their PMI back above 50, which is the border between expansion and contraction, which is great news. And there you can see arguably the strongest V, and that's the China Composite PMI. This is very good news. The second largest economy in the world will not even go into recession. So, uh, yes, I know there's a lot of bad news around, but look at this slide. The IMF, never in its history, has there been such a large spread between one year's GDP growth forecasts and the next. And we're seeing it here. And once again, if I were to include 2019, you'll see Vs all over the show. You'll see Vs. South African perspective. Now, just in case you think I've been smoking my socks but, uh, and being too optimistic, household disposable income will remain under pressure. And in real terms, it will take a marginal or even modest dip this year. In nominal terms, probably stay uh, very static. But next year, next year is the clue. And the growth that everybody expects to happen, to occur next year, the foundation will be laid now, in the third and fourth quarters, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, current account of balance of payments, I, if you haven't heard it yet, South Africa has... In the first quarter of this year, we had, for the first time in 17 years, we had a current account surplus. Fundamental balance of payment stability. And a quick swipe at Stats SA. I don't know what they've been smoking. They tell us we're in a recession first quarter, but if you take GDP growth in nominal terms, that's face value, that's, just, that's your tills working. Uh, we had growth of 5.8%. You deduct inflation from that, which was 41 I don't know where they get the negative growth from. And if you look at gross national product, where you add foreign income receipts and you subtract foreign income payments, then we add a real growth rate of South Africa's gross national product year on year in the first quarter of 3.8%. So it's not as bad as Stats SA uh, pretends it to be. Another V, the JSE, fantastic news. Bouncing right back. Um, Spars... Uh, Share price as of this morning had, had improved by more than 11%. Uh, at least two of the other major retailers were more or less uh, where they were at their low. So once again, you're doing something right. Our bond yields are still attractive, so we're guaranteed inflow of foreign funds. Bearing in mind that with these stats, uh, the definition of a statistician, uh, it's a person that will tell you if your feet are in the oven and your head is in the freezer, on average you are quite comfortable. But I wouldn't try that. And this is, uh, this is the cherry in my pack. The lowest prime overdraft rate in history. And don't forget that there is an inverse correlation between lending rates and just about any type of expenditure except staple foods. So on this slide, I've plotted new vehicles. This holds for a lot of other stuff which people buy in your stores. Um, and as far as uh, the forecast for growth in South Africa is concerned, exactly the same trend as with the country forecasts. Everybody expects a recession this year. That's unavoidable. It won't be that deep. Next year, positive growth, pretty solid positive growth. Vs once again. I did an exercise with uh, Prof. Ilse Boota. Um, no relation. She was my best student that I ever had 28 years ago at Rau. Uh, she was from Rensburg then. But as, as we say in Afrikaans, she had a good uh, She married a Boota, which is not so bad. And we ran an econometric model. We asked the model to tell us what would South Africa's GDP have been today 
If the real prime rate, prime minus CPI, had stayed at 3%, where it was when John Marcus was governor, and not gone to an average of 5.3, ultimately 6%, with the new Hawkish Monetary Policy Committee, where the hell they got those guys from, is beyond me. Our GDP would have been 560 billion rand larger today than it is. That's half a trillion. Don't underestimate the power of low interest rates. Um, we are now in a situation in South Africa where we have the record low interest rates. If the Reserve Bank sends out a message to convince us that Interest rates will remain low for a considerable period of time and there is a good chance that will happen. And government and the private sector get cracking on these 55 major infrastructure projects, which doesn't need treasury finance. This is pu private sector finance. And if they do not uh, effect ex expropriation without compensation, which I really don't believe they will, uh, Agbus uh, agrees with me on that, then we are bound to start recovering very fast. We have already, according to our mutuals research, we are back at over 80% of our capacity that aligns with our own research. I leave you with uh, words of wisdom spoken 400 years ago by Francis Bacon. A wise man, and I'd like to add, and woman, will make more opportunities than he or she finds. Thank you very much.